Did you know that the health of your bones could determine exactly how long you live? And if you think that calcium is your only ticket that you need for healthier bones, then think again, because it's essentially pointless without these other essential nutrients. In this video, I'm going to give you the complete nutritional stack as well as lifestyle tips and science-backed exercises that you need to help fortify your skeleton. This information is vital no matter your age. If you're younger watching this and thinking, I don't need to worry about this until my bones are old and crumbly, then you're wrong because the decisions you make in your younger years determine exactly what your bone health will be in later life. Stick around to the end because I'm going to be breaking down common myths such as the one regarding dairy and skeletal health as well as introducing lesser known nutrients and supplements as it relates to your bone health and therefore your mortality. So why does bone health matter more than you may think? Let's start with a shocking statistic. Over 10 million Americans aged 50 and older have osteoporosis, which is the loss of bone mineral density and the loss of architecture on the bone that translate to it being more fragile and susceptible to break. And 43 million have low bone mass, which is just a step away from having osteoporosis. Now, why does this matter? Now, let's just take the population of 85 year olds and compare them to those aged 65 to 69. In men, in this older age group, they are 33 times more likely and women are 19 times more likely to suffer a fracture, specifically hip fractures. But here's the kicker. A hip fracture doesn't just mean a cast and crutches for a few weeks. It is a sign of declining overall health and not just a sign of declining health, but a cause of it. According to the National Institute of Care and Health Excellence, for those suffering with a hip fracture, 10% of them will die within one month and a third of them will be dead within the year. So your bones are more than just your body's frame. They're your life insurance. So let's just find out exactly how you can support them so they can support you. Your bones are more than just a scaffold for your body. They are like a bank that stores minerals such as phosphate and magnesium and calcium for which your body can draw upon as it needs them for critical functions like muscle contraction and balancing your body's pH. But perhaps what is most often overlooked is one of its most critical functions, and that is the production of blood. Your bone marrow is the production line for life itself. So taking care of your bones isn't just protecting yourself from fractures as important as that may be. It's about ensuring your body functions optimally. Now bone loss does not just happen overnight. It is a steady decline. For most people, this decline starts around the age of 30, probably earlier than you might think, but this is when it reaches its peak. After that, it's a slow and steady decline with women experiencing an accelerated decline post menopause. But here is the good news, maximizing the peak of your bone mineral density during your 20s and 30s and slowing its decline can make a huge difference in your later decades, ensuring that you can live a long life and remain active and support all your bodily functions. I cannot emphasize how it's never too late or too early implement the things that I'll be talking about today. Let's get into the science of how to strengthen your bones. So what are the core nutrients for bone health? Calcium, as you might expect, is kind of held as the star player, but it is certainly not the whole team. Let's break it down nutrient by nutrient. Number one, calcium. The foundation. 98% of your body's calcium is stored within your bones. It is the mineral bricks in your skeletal wall. But here is where it's interesting. Your bones are not static. They are constantly breaking down and rebuilding. And in this continual process, it's important that they have the right nutrients. Otherwise, the bone that they will continue to produce will not be as strong as the one previous. And calcium plays a key role in this. If you don't get enough calcium, your body will rob your bones of this calcium to support other functions and your bones will pay the price. But more is not always better. Now, a really interesting study in the BMJ that studied over 14,000 women over years wanted to ask the question of how much calcium do you need and how protective is it against fractures? What it determined was that intake of less than 751 milligrams per day was significantly associated with an increased risk of fractures. However, gradual increases above this 751 milligrams did not offer added protection as you might expect. And interestingly, the highest quintile of calcium intake within this study population actually had a 
higher risk of hip fractures. So in conclusion, these gradual increases in calcium did not translate to a lower risk of osteoporosis above what was needed, nor a reduction in fracture risk. And this demonstrates the importance of making sure you hit your minimum requirement, which tends to vary based on your age, your gender, and also your status, whether you're pregnant or whether you're dealing with certain injuries. However, as a general measure, aiming for at least a thousand milligrams covers you enough for that minimal requirement without going into excess. Great sources tend to be sardines, almonds, leafy greens. You're probably thinking, well, what about the one I was always told about when I was a child? Milk. Well, interestingly, this was put to the test. What this study showed was that comparing the higher dairy intake to those of the lowest, there was no clear association with overall protection regarding fractures, with the only benefit seen in reduction in vertebral fractures. As for bone mineral density, the results were heterogeneous and no clear conclusion could be made. Some evidence suggested that sufficient consumption of dairy during both younger and in the elderly years did offer some protection and perhaps benefits to bone mineral density, but these weren't conclusive. Once again, this demonstrated that more is not always better and that despite milk being a good source of calcium, this didn't necessarily translate to benefits to your bone health. And this may be because, again, they were reaching excess levels and maybe because of other net effects of the dairy itself on bone health, not just looking at calcium. It could be a litany of other confounding variables that meant that this did not show the benefit that we were all told as children, drink your milk for strong bones. Now, here's what's interesting. In that first study, looking at calcium intake, what they did find was that osteoporotic fractures were more likely when in the presence of vitamin d deficiency just before we continue i would love for you to hit that like and subscribe button ring ding ding that bell i'm an acute medical specialist but with a love for longevity and performance medicine i release content each week that i hope offers concise and practical evidence-based medicine to just help you live a healthy and better life beat death in life hitting those buttons will be the easiest thing you do today but it could just benefit you for years to come so i'd love to have you along for the journey okay let's move on to so number two is vitamin D the gatekeeper. If you've watched any of my videos, you will know I'm like a broken record, always talking about vitamin D, but for good reason. Think of vitamin D as the bouncer that allows calcium into your bloodstream. Without it, calcium cannot do its job. A deficiency in vitamin D is like having all the building materials, but no construction crew. It is essential. Despite its name, vitamin D is a steroid hormone, essential for the calcium absorption and the mineralization of your bone, and therefore is positively associated with your bone mineral density. And it is well established that when you see vitamin D deficiency, whether it's in children causing rickets or in adults causing osteomalacia, which is a softening of the bone, highlighting its importance. Hitting your minimum requirement of vitamin D is essential and this is where testing can be really, really helpful. If this is not available to you, then certainly around 800 to 1,000 units a day is generally advised. Now, of course, the best source is from nature itself. It is from sunlight. But if you live in climates where the sun seems ever absent or you live a lifestyle where getting sun exposure is difficult, then of course, eating the right foods or supplementing where necessary is at your disposal. However, just like calcium, more is not always better at least when it comes to skeletal health. If we are talking about bone health and bone health only, then taking more and more vitamin D does not translate to always improvements in your skeletal health. In studies using healthy children and adults that have not been selected for vitamin D deficiency, you don't see the same benefits in giving them the vitamin D supplement in regards to their bone health. Likewise, in this randomized placebo controlled trial, they gave participants either 10,000 or 4,000 units of vitamin D, comparing it to only 400 units. And in fact, in the higher doses, they did not see the benefits in bone mineral density or reduced risk of fractures. So it's all about just making sure you have enough. So you can whisper in your doctor's ear and ask them kindly, they may be willing to give you a vitamin D test. If not, as I suggested, generally between 800 and 1000 units a day is sufficient in order to ensure that you have enough to support your bone health. Now, it's difficult to talk about vitamin D without talking about this next essential nutrient, which actually receives very little attention and that is vitamin K2. Vitamin K2, the director. Vitamin K2 ensures that calcium goes to the right place, i.e. your bones and not your arteries. It works alongside calcium to support bone formation and reducing its breakdown, tilting the balance in favor of producing bone. Now, of course, when this balance tips in favor of breaking down bone as opposed to rebuilding it, we see this loss in bone mineral density. 
And one way this is displayed is in vertebral height. Of course, as we get older, we tend to get shorter. Part of the reason is because of this reduction in our vertebral height, these bones develop small fractures and actually begin to collapse over time. In this study, they wanted to investigate the impact of giving vitamin K2 on vertebral height. And they did this in healthy postmenopausal ladies because these are often the populations that are most vulnerable. And they showed that just by giving 180 micrograms per day after two and three years in the treatment group, given the vitamin K2, the vertebrae's height loss was significantly lower compared to the placebo. It showed to reduce the risk of these vertebral fractures and bone loss, which is really important if you wanna make sure that you're walking tall and proud well into your later years. Now you can find vitamin K2 in fermented foods and you can also find them in animal products like liver and cheese. And I always emphasize to try and get these nutrients in their whole food form, but of course you can get them in supplement if you need them. Now the next one is so often overlooked and yet is so essential. Magnesium, the unsung hero. Magnesium is another critical nutrient that contributes to your bone density. Most people are unaware that magnesium is actually a cofactor for the enzymes that actually help metabolize and activate vitamin D. Without magnesium, vitamin D cannot be metabolized and therefore remains inactive. And there are plenty of reasons why you may be low in magnesium, with some estimates suggesting that it could be as high as 40% of the population. If you're under stress, if you're taking certain medications, if you drink alcohol, smoke, and if insufficiencies in your diet, all of these can contribute to having low magnesium. And there are certain populations are at heightened risks, those postmenopausal, also people with celiac, diabetes, gut absorption issues, and those on certain medications, as I mentioned, particularly things like PPIs. From various studies carried out on the serum concentration of magnesium and its relationship with bone health, it has been shown that lower levels of magnesium are associated with increased risks of osteoporosis, and simply by correcting this, shows improvements in bone mineral density. So incorporate dark leafy greens, dark chocolate, nuts, legumes, avocados, all of these are great sources of magnesium. And if you are considering supplementation, I'd advise magnesium theonate as it's better for absorption. So number five is protein and collagen. The framework. Protein makes up about 50% of your bone volume and collagen provides the structural matrix. This amazing architecture that provides the strength and rigidity in your bones. That means that you're not just a sloppy bag of organs. And that when you put your body through these incredible tasks, that your bones don't simply just crumble under the strain. This study looked at giving specific collagen peptides to 131 postmenopausal ladies with a reduction in their bone mineral density. They measured the effects of giving five grams of collagen peptides compared to a placebo over the course of the year. And they were looking at changes in the bone mineral density in the neck of the femur. That is essentially your hip bone and the point of weakness for many people. It is the area that people so often fracture as they get older. And as I explained earlier, a point of real risk for mortality. And the results showed that they had an improved bone mineral density and the collagen group and also improvement in certain bone biomarkers, showing that there was increased bone formation and reduction in bone loss. Now, the result of this study was so interesting that they actually repeated it, except this time over the course of four years. And once more, it reinforced the initial results that in the treatment group, given the collagen peptides, they saw improvements in their bone mineral density. And in fact, in the treatment group, none of them got any fractures. Now, in this study, it was a relatively small sample size, and the Royal Osteoporosis Society does not yet include collagen in one of its recommended nutrients. So the evidence may not be conclusive, but I wanted to at least share with you the results as it is interesting, and it's up to you whether you want to take them. A really good source of collagen is bone broth, which you can buy or you can make yourself if you have the time. Otherwise, you can also buy both bovine and marine collagen peptides a powder that you can easily add to coffees and smoothies and other recipes. So there are five nutrients that are great elements to support bone health. But as a broader approach, as a broader dietary approach, in various studies, it's been shown that the Mediterranean diet is probably optimal in support of bone health. For example, even olive oil, which is just a component of the Mediterranean diet, has been shown to reduce bone loss. But of course, it's not just about what you eat. It is also about what you do. So lastly, just some quick guidance on exercise. Your bones respond to stress, just like your muscles do. When you lift heavy things, they get bigger and stronger. This is why weight-bearing exercises, things like running or weightlifting, 
are so important for bone health. To elaborate, studies show that both aerobic and resistance training contribute to better bone health. In this regard, literature indicates that aerobic training, things like jogging, actually help reduce bone resorption, that is the breakdown of your bones. In comparison, resistance training, i.e. lifting heavy things, contributes to better bone mass. Therefore, combining multiple exercise modalities is likely going to confer the greatest benefit. So in summary, here are the practical takeaways. Limit alcohol and smoking as these have detrimental effects on your bone health. Try and incorporate those five essential nutrients as best you can, but you can also adopt the broader Mediterranean diet in support of this. You can ask your doctor to test you on some of these nutrients, otherwise just eat for better health. If you're concerned that you may be suffering from osteoporosis or low bone density, then have a chat with your doctor. They may be able to arrange you a DEXA scan, which will assess your bone density and we can go from there. And lastly, incorporate exercise, both resistance and aerobic training for their combined benefit. So there you have it, a regimen to help support bone health. I really hope you found that helpful. Please do like, comment what you found useful, or what you'd like to try, or any questions you have, and do share with anyone you think this information may benefit. As always, do discuss with your doctor, and if there's anything I can do for you, please do leave a comment. Remember, bone health isn't just about avoiding fractures, as important as that may be. It's about supporting your whole body health and longevity, so your bones can carry you into a long, healthy life. So do like and subscribe. If you want to find out what studies have revealed to be the best exercises to improve your cardiovascular system, then watch here. Until then, take care.